What would you say to somebody who's coming across your work for the first time? Mouth breathing is a disaster for your health. 11 years ago, when all of my respiratory problems that I had, I had quite a few, suddenly went away once I learned how to breathe properly. How much truth actually is there in mewing? And is it just something that silly, insecure teenagers do? It is not important for young kids to mew. It's important for young kids to have proper oral posture. These are two completely different things. You will never resolve anxiety unless you get control of your breathing when you're constantly over breathing you're sending your brain signals that you are stressed out and then your brain reacts by having you breathe too much learning how to breathe deep and slowly through your nose can really transform your health Yeah, I guess it is really similar principles. Um, you're, you're kind of taking something to the extreme, so then you kind of reset your baseline. And one of the ways that you describe yourself doing that as well is with carbon dioxide therapy. So you describe, um, again, choking is, um, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, choking is actually not about lack of oxygen. Again, it's about a buildup of carbon dioxide, which makes you think that you're lacking oxygen. And so one of the, um, one of the things you do is get yourself stuffed with carbon dioxide to build up that tolerance. Um, how effective is that for, for sport to bring it back? So, so if we're using the term choking only in regards to people who are at a critical stage of suffering and asthma or panic attack. So what they do is they are over breathing so much then something stresses them out again and they start over breathing more and this slowly crests up until they reach a crisis point where they feel they can't breathe. <laughs> right. And that's where they really freak out. Some people say that this is the body's response to having such low CO2 that it is trying to force them to hold their breath, to open up those blood vessels, to deliver more oxygen to all of these areas that are deficient. So that's, that's what, when I, you were referring to choking, this is this, is this crisis point um, for asthma or panic attacks. So what carbon dioxide therapy does, especially for populations that are habitually over-breathing and have chronically low CO2, which all of these populations I just mentioned do have, there have been studies showing that, is some people believe that this is a way of resetting the brain, specifically these chemoreceptors and their connection to the brain, resetting them so they can have these normal levels of CO2 in their bodies and be comfortable with it so that they would normally be breathing rhythmically and slowly. I know a lot of biochemistry here, it's complicated, but that's the general premise. And the CO2 therapy was used so successfully for so many decades and then it completely disappeared. And now we know why it disappeared. This has been well studied. It's because it was stamped out by anesthesiologists who felt it was too much competition with what they were doing. Uh, and that's, that's not a hypothesis, that's, that's a fact. But it's starting to come back. The CO2 therapy is really mm -hmm. starting to come back and it works incredibly well for all those reasons I mentioned. Mm. Obviously you have to have access to specific facilities, the ability to have pressurized air with the right amount of carbon dioxide for somebody who doesn't have that is there a way you can just by breath holding maybe just increasing your carbon dioxide naturally yeah don't don't go get a co2 tank kids don't get your soda stream and and try to hack into that not not good so if you see what's happened with carbon dioxide therapy all it's doing is making a very easy hack to what breath holding is naturally doing. So breath holding is naturally allowing you to tolerate more carbon dioxide. And the more carbon dioxide you tolerate, the calmer your body gets, the slower you will be breathing. So breath holding has been an essential part of all ancient Chinese breathing practices, Qigong, almost every single one of those techniques includes breath holding, pranayama, means the cessation of breathing. That's what pranayama means, the control of breath. So there's breath holding throughout pranayama, kundalini, and more. So the safest and best way of building up that carbon dioxide threshold 
and getting all the benefits of what would be carbon dioxide therapy is to learn how to hold your breath. Wim Hof method has you hold your breath three, four minutes at a time. So to pranayama, so to qigong. So you can pick whatever method you want. The key is to consciously learn how to hold your breath longer, and that correlates directly with less anxiety and less asthma as well. Ever shown up to the beach with a big bush getting rejected left, right, and center, so you have to walk away with your pubes between your legs? Then get yourself a Manscaped and rule the beach. Wear your shorts with no shame. Get the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra now with a discount code LOAF to get a full 20% off so that your baguette leaves no crumbs. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the clip from that episode. If you'd like to check out the full interview with James Nestor, you can click right here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave your comments below.